the woes of socialism are typically attributed to capitalism capitalism in our modern time much of what young people ascribe to the problems of capitalism and uh, greedy corporate and profiteering etc is pushed upon them by many of the boomers especially those in positions of power when the reality is is that it's socialism that has created the poverty that now exists under many people in gen z gen x uh, millennials and etc and of course now the now alpha generation that is growing up and so many of these people find it very difficult to grow up at, at our times with the high prices corporations uh, unwilling to pay more as a result this is why you see a lot of young people going on strike not realizing that striking benefits the existing uh, government the reason being is because they then can reap more of those profits that the corporations are earning via taxation by the common person because the common person has less in the way of tax benefits than corporations do and of course they don't understand the tax code so governments love this this is why the governments are often pro unions because the unions are used uh, to benefit the government via extracting wealth from corporations now under true capitalism you don't have licensure right to be a nurse to be whatever a doctor uh, whatever field you want to go into as your interest you don't need the government to give you the okay via a certificate a license some sort of registration etc under communism you do because they hold and own the means of production and this is what socialism pushes now in america and this is a there we have a democratic socialist party and it's been this way for a very long time this is not something that is new it's just very out in the open <clears throat> excuse me it's just very out in the open to the point they don't even try to hide it anymore and of course they indoctrinate the young people this is why they typically this is why they have uh, a young democratic socialist party and this benefits the elder class the owning class right most baby boomers own most of the stocks they own most of the homes and so it benefits them to vote for more welfare programs that causes the government to increase the amount of currency that exists and of course it devalues your labor they're not working right many of these people are retirement or nearing retirement and so they're not having to go out and labor so their va their labor is not being devalued and much of their wealth is tied into their homes that they bought very cheaply you know you look back at homes that were bought 20 or 30 years ago a home that was purchased for let's say 70 80 100,000 back then is now probably a million dollar home now of course depending upon where that home resides and of course you try to go out into the market you want to buy a home you want to rent an apartment and prices are exuberant and of course a lot of this is related to the boomer generation and the traditionalist generation that came before them voting for socialism and so the government in essence operates as a communistic regime where they own everything and the people exist under socialism so they can vote for other people's money typically other poor people themselves for an example like you look at um the tsa that operates here in new york right the local government owns the means of production they own the transportation industry the people that work hand in glove with that organization as part of the socialist class then say well we want more money so you need to give us more money by taking more of their money and then giving it to us and of course this happens in many different areas in the economy with this healthcare. you see nurses going on strike automotive industry going on strike and so what they're striking for is for the government that has the authority that owns the means of production is you need to go out and you need to be able to take money from these people and you need to give it to us and the form and of course the government likes this because they're like hey we're just going to reap more money come tax season so they this is why they enjoy it this is why they have a benefit in keeping home prices higher 
or apartment prices higher, why there are many apartments in New York that are not that they're not able to rent out, and of course because it keeps home prices higher, and of course via taxation is higher, because they gain uh, real estate taxes and a lot of the benefits of having children and the school districts, etc., benefit from real estate taxation. That's where a lot of the funding comes from. And so you see socialism in different facets, in different avenues of the market, whether it's housing, uh, quote unquote corporate uh, socialism via, <coughs> excuse me, via uh, pension programs. I worked for this corporation for. 20 years, 25 years, so I deserve a check for the rest of my remaining life. And it's like, how did you draw that conclusion? How did you draw the conclusion that you deserve to have other people who come behind you work for your benefit? Work to give you a check so that you can live the rest of your life in luxury. Again, this is what you get under socialism. And of course, the only way that they're able to do that is via communism. We need a big government that can force the common person, if you want to reside in this nation, if you want to be able to participate in our approved jobs, right? Because the only way that you can start a business is if the government approves it. Otherwise, it's deemed illegal. And of course, none of this exists under capitalism, under a free market. Under a free market, you can go out and offer a good and offer a service. And it's up to the market, the community of people, to say whether they value your product or service or not, and to what extent they value they value that service or product. But the government can come in and say, well, you have to buy this product because we say so. Another example of that is during COVID and the COVID jab. And many young people who were not at risk of getting sick and dying were forced to keep their job were forced to have their bodies violated by the older generation who was at risk for getting sick and dying. And so they were more than willing to socialize the loss. And we're seeing a lot of young people now. Some people are talking about this, like um, Dr. John Campbell, talking about the excess deaths among young people, the suicide rate that was very high among young people during the lockdowns, all to benefit the classes, the traditionalist class and of course the baby boomer class that have come before us and so for many of these individuals they're living it up this is an article that came out in june of 2023 talking about how gen z and millennials are struggling and of course i would say maybe even some gen xers well the the baby boomer class is living it up and so they have a lot of their wealth tied into the stock market tied into housing and so for a lot of them they're sitting on a lot of the wealth that remains in the country. And of course, they're not looking to give up any of that wealth. They want the cheapest labor that they can find. And they're they're not looking to leave anything behind. They're going to spend everything to the very last minute. And whatever they can, they will throw on the backs of taxpayers. This is a perfect example like with Medicare and Medicaid, where me as a Gen Xer or you as a millennial, as a as a Gen Z individual, you are forced to pay these ridiculous high rates when it comes to getting some minor health care. Do you need to see a doctor? Well, that's going to be $300. And I'm like, well, that was for a 15 or 20 minute visit. You really didn't do all that much. The reason being, it is to fund the retirement health care for these individuals. And so this article goes on to talk about how Bank of America shows that the data shows a very significant gap. And spending has opened recently between the older generation and younger generations with, of course, baby boomers and even traditionalists that are going out there and they're ramping up their spending while Gen X and Gen Z and millennials are being forced to cut back as they grapple with high housing costs and looming student death, uh, student debt. So when these individuals went to school, it didn't cost that much by comparison to the money that they were earning. When they wanted to go out and buy houses, it didn't cost as much by comparison to what they were earning. But for us nowadays, the average person makes probably 60000 maybe at most, with housing costing over 400000 The average home in America is north of 400000 And so we're seeing the prices for everything 
are steadily rising. And of course, a lot of the people who are benefiting are the people who came early to the system. This is why you look at individuals, for example, like Robert Kiyosaki, who pretends to be like this real estate financial guru who really just benefited from the socialist system because he came at a time period where the Ponzi scheme was just starting. And so the people who enter the Ponzi scheme at the beginning are the ones that benefit the most. And the people who come late to the party are the ones that end up with nothing. And this is how a Ponzi scheme works. So they throw all this taxation on your back. And then when you go and you're like, well, hey, you know, this is why most people who are like Gen Xers and Gen Zers, they realize there's not going to be any pot there when I retire. There isn't going to be any Social Security when I retire. And they know that the people in government know this. And the people who are benefiting now from those programs know this and they don't care as long as they're able to get what they were quote unquote promised it doesn't matter who they have to sacrifice whether that's their children grandchildren or great grandchildren and this is why i talked about this before this is what ronald reagan warned about that these generations would in essence become debt slaves because these people kept voting for socialism and this is what we're seeing happen in our time this is why you see a lot of people not willing to participate in the labor market because they realize that so much of their money and time is just basically being taken away from them. I think the average is something like three months out of the year goes to taxation. So you're in essence working for free. That's slavery. That's what slavery is. And this is what we have in the United States of America. And it's not just in the United States, but it's throughout the whole globe. And this is why I say we live under a communist socialist regime, not just within our own country, but in every other country that is controlled by the United States of America. And this is why many of these people hate the United States of America. And of course, they tell you it's because of our way of life. And it's like, yeah, because our way of life is funded off of the backs of other individuals who are having their labor stolen from them via taxation. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave your comment below, and I'll check you next time.